Welcome back to the tool shed. In this tool, TikTok and the Croc, I want to share with you a mythical tale that you all know, but probably, like me, hadn't thought about it in this particular way. And it relates to the work that I do in my life and the people, most of the people, not all, that I guide, moving from the morning of life, the first half of life, to the afternoon of life, the second half of life, waking up to what we're really dealing with in this transition that the rules change, the goals change, the ways of being in the world changes, but we don't know that because we don't talk about it, we don't study it, we don't have conversations about it, and so it's very important to develop new vocabulary, new ways of thinking and being in the second half of life if you want to do it right. Well, one of those ways comes down to the ancient tale of Peter Pan. Peter Pan is a profound myth. So let's start with Peter. Peter is, of course, in the morning of life. He's the quintessential morning of life boy who doesn't want to grow up. He's living in that world where he doesn't have responsibilities. He gets to fly around all day long. Peter Pan. Pan is the god of everything. In the Enneagram language, he's a seven. He just wants to experience it all. He doesn't want limits. He doesn't want responsibilities because that curtails his freedoms. And so he just wants to have fun. Um, and he lives in, you know, Neverland with the Lost Boys. And there is this feeling of, hey, that has its time and its place in your teens, into your 20s. And then it gets to this point where it's uncomfortable. Then it becomes sort of pathetic. And then it becomes tragic if we don't eventually make the transition out of the morning of life into the afternoon of life. But the problem with the story of Peter Pan is there's another character in there that we don't focus on, we don't think about, and it's Captain Hook. Captain Hook is in the afternoon of life. And the problem with the story is that Peter Pan is painted as one extreme and sort of it looks like a lot of fun. Captain Hook is painted as miserable, broken down, um, angry, right? He's, he spends his life trying to kill Peter Pan, trying to, to, he's mad at the morning boy because he's stuck in, I would call high noon, but he's in the afternoon, he's the second half of life and he's jaded and he's, his, you know, his dreams have been dashed and he's missing a, a hand. Why is he missing a hand? Because that morning boy, Peter Pan, chopped it off and fed it to the crocodile. And so we are looking at sort of two extremes, one, the boy who never wants to grow up and one, the angry man who frankly doesn't want to be in the afternoon and wants to go back to the morning. But there's an, also another a key piece of this story and that is what hap would happen if Captain Hook would come to a man uprising group. <laughs> he would do this work of facing what he's left behind in the morning of life, facing not all the, the wonderful things, but the, the negative things, the shallowness, the, the self-centeredness of that chapter in all of our lives. The fact that the woman he loves, Wendy, doesn't want to be with him because she wants a man. I think in the story she ends up, in the true story, not the movie, she ends up marrying somebody else because he doesn't want to grow up and she needs a man. Great moment in the movie where he's in her bedroom and he's wrestling, he wakes her up, he's wrestling with his shadow, right? And this is that moment where you can see like he wants something more than just to live in the morning and to be a lost boy, but he doesn't know how to own his shadow, own the suffering, own the, the darker side of his personality and his choices in life. And Wendy helps him sew on his shadow. So that's how you get into the afternoon by taking responsibility and facing the shadows. Now, Captain Hook is physiologically or biologically, age-wise, he's in the afternoon, but he hasn't moved in there from a mind, heart, and soul perspective. Why? Because he's still facing backwards, angry at Peter, chasing after Peter, pissed off at Peter for feeding his hand to the crocodile, but more than that, and this is, gets us into the croc and TikTok. He's, TikTok is in the clock, not as in the uh, social media app. He um, is running, and what is he running from? He's running from the alligator, the alligator who's been chasing him ever since he tasted his hand. He's been chasing after Captain Hook. There's only one thing in the whole story Captain Hook is afraid of, and that is the crocodile. And it's not just because the crocodile wants to eat him, yes, but why does the crocodile want to eat him? Because it's not about a crocodile. It's about the clock inside the crocodile's stomach. Every time Captain Hook hears the crocodile, what does he hear? Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. TikTok. Welcome to the afternoon. This is what we're dealing with. Most people, most guys in particular, don't realize it's about death. 
That's why they're getting the sports car. That's why they're chasing the younger woman or marrying the younger woman or having an affair with the younger woman. It's rarely it's the older woman. That's why they're, um, you know, going back to activities of sort of childhood. Nothing wrong with any, well, some of these things are wrong with, but lots of guys I talk to um, do a lot of fantasy football. And there's nothing wrong with fantasy football until it takes you away from your family, from your reality. Right? And like anything else, it can become a drug and it can become an escape. And so we're running. And what are we running from? We're running from adulthood. We're running from the fear of death. Most guys will say, I'm not afraid of death. Bullshit. There isn't a man alive who hasn't feared at some primal level. And if, you, and if you're not afraid, then you're not living big enough. Because I'm afraid to leave my wife behind to leave her on her own. I'm afraid to leave my kids. I'm afraid to say goodbye for the last time. It doesn't mean I live in fear. I use that fear and we'll get there. But I'm afraid, I'm afraid that she's gonna marry somebody else and replace me. Like that breaks my heart. I want her to be happy. I want her to continue on with her life. Ariel, if you're watching this, I really don't, don't marry him. But especially if I'm here, but if I'm gone, don't marry him. No, but really I do want her to be happy, but it breaks my heart and I gotta, I gotta face that. I gotta grapple with that. I gotta own that. We watched the movie American Beauty as part of the Man Uprising curriculum. Watch that movie to see what happens when we start chasing the wrong things and not dealing with the underlying current that men at midlife, we are starting to feel our mortality. We're starting to feel the alligator behind us. It's no longer theoretical. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. It's a curse and it's a blessing because that clock is what wakes us up in the morning and in our lives. That clock is what makes us realize it's, it's running. The stopwatch is ticking. The hourglass is going behind me. I have hourglasses all over my office. I love hourglasses, right? It reminds me that the sand is dripping through and someday it'll run out. So what do I do with my precious grains of sand, my precious ticks of the clock? That's what, a, that's what it means to rise up in the second half of life, to stop running from what we're afraid of, to stop pretending like we're, we're not trying to outsmart death. You know how many guys I talk to in the second half of life who become obsessed with health? Great, take care of yourself, absolutely. But in the words of Dennis Prager, no matter how much you run, no matter how much tofu you eat, you're still gonna die. Don't do it to escape death. Do it to prolong death. Do it to live however long you're here with vitality and vigor, but stand guard against running from just another crocodile in your life. That's the work of the second half of life. Can we stop looking backwards towards the morning? Can we stop revering Peter Pan? Can we stop living, running from our fears, from, our, from the crocodile, from our, our death? Can we stop being angry and move into the second half of life and rise up and be a true captain of our life, Invictus, captor of my fate, master of my soul, something like that? Can we move into the second half of life and rise up in our power? And that's what it means to hear, to face, to confront, and to defy the TikTok and that crock. I will see you in the next video. Until then, rise up in the second half of life.